Okay, hey everybody, this is Diane O'Brien, your headhunting housewife. This is session two of a 10 part series of how to become a headhunting housewife, which is basically a home based recruiter for us women out there that left corporate America to uh, often stay home and raise children but want to still earn great income. So, on the first clip, basically, I reviewed just asking yourself the right questions. If you're waking up and saying, So, you know, I want to be a recruiter. That clip was really designed to ask yourself a few of the many questions you should be asking to see if it's going to be a right fit for you. And I think I left off on, we went through time management and I think office space. And, and this clip too is going to be showing um, or designated more for your office space. And basically I touched on that a little bit about you just need a quiet office space, doesn't have to be big, but this is getting more into what you're going to need. And some of the basics here, I'm not going to waste time on, you know, what software for your laptop or, um, you know, the your phone and the basics obviously you have to have. You're going to need Adobe, by the way, for the contracts. You can do signatures without having to use faxes anymore, those type of things. But also within your office, um, to get yourself branded and to start your company and your brand name out there, uh, you might start wanting to think about a website. You're not going to need that at first um, to start because I'm a big believer if you try to start setting up everything you need that you know get your business cards all done you want your website perfect and you know wait for the perfect time to launch uh, I, I just think it might never happen I think the most successful uh, people and I learned this out of college when I was a young sales girl and watching other salespeople they often did jump right in now you want to take calculated risk I talked in the first session about don't be stupid don't jump into something that you're where you're setting yourself up for failure however if you know the basics are there we cover that you know what you're doing this is where you want to play um, and you feel confident in that don't wait to get all the you know T's crossed and all the I's dotted and have your even your business plan I know everyone says get a business plan first but I always have a very loose business plan that I would maybe type up and uh, but that way you just kind of get moving and you kind of figure it out as you go and that's worked for me personally so I'm only going to speak to my experience on these clips um, and hopefully that'll work for you so you know again you don't need a business card you don't need your website but start thinking about that because to start you know the first thing you're gonna need is going to be a client I mean before you can ever call yourself a recruiter um, obviously you're going to want to have a client you're going to have to put a contract put a contract in place that you're going to be doing a search for them there's different searches you're going to be focused probably on contingent here considering I'm talking to moms that maybe haven't uh, done their own recruiting gig before and, and are new to recruiting um, later you can then move into exclusivity and then into retained which was my kind of career progression uh, however to start out and with the economy unless again you have great experience within recruiting I could def definitely speak to then if you start your own business going right into executive recruiting but that came for years later for me so again I'm going to follow the experience that I did so uh, with a contingent recruiter you don't even need a contract at first because often the HR people you're speaking to or small company CEOs or even sales managers whoever wherever you're gonna be recruiting in they'll often have their own template they'll send to you if you need a quick one page or contract that's something I'm able to send over to I have some templates to give to recruiters that need help in the beginning so that will be available when I kind of figure out the best way to, to make that happen for you um, so really it's going to be figuring out that's kind of I think clip three is going to be about getting the um, your client but let me start talking about this a little bit right now because that's going to be be the key into thinking about um, who you are and what your company is going to be about and what you're going after some of you and I think I've heard this from a lot of you say I want to get in recruiting I match all the skill sets um, it sounds great maybe I had a sales background even I'm not here at home where would I even start and uh, for me, again, I didn't make the decision to jump into Korea. It kind of came upon me. I was working selling uh, GE medical software in, in New York here in Philly, and the company I worked for asked me to recruit for them uh, full time to actually hire more teams for GE medical at the time. And they wanted me to kind of represent what I was hiring. They saw me as a good salesperson, and I was able to very easily transition into them. It was almost like, you know, I was still using sales, you're selling people at this point, not product. Um, and it was very no risk, even though I talk about you need to take risk. The risk was really taken away from me because my CEO, the boss at the time, told me, Diane, if you don't like it or like this recruiting gig, there's always a sales job. You can go back to that anytime. So it made so much sense. And because I knew I can't remember if I was pregnant at that time or trying to get pregnant, um, you know, in sales, I was a road warrior and I was trying to already think of ways to be at home more. And this call comes along from my boss saying, hey, come into the office. Let's talk about an opportunity, um, which again changed my life and worked so perfectly. Um, so anyway, I'm getting, I would keep getting off topic. So, uh, oh, for, so, to, so how you pick what you're going to get. And I, because of that, um, without my own choosing, started hiring other salespeople for, 
um, this company called Fusion, which led all these teams. They were partners at GE Medical, and we hired all their sales teams, the teams that would sell MRIs and CAT scans, um, X-ray machines, as well as some software. And, and we then later did it for other teams like IBM and Agilent. So I automatically had that figured out for me, and, uh, and it was fun because I was a salesperson. It was easy to hire salespeople. So that's my point here is that whatever you came from doing, if you were accountant before you left corporate, why not hire accountants? The company I work for right now, Magellan, is known here in Philadelphia area, and they're moving quickly nationwide. Um, before I, I helped work with them on the claim tax side, most which was recent, they were doing all accountants, and they grew very quickly in their CEO, and I think trying to think of both Matt and Joe, um, I believe both had accounting backgrounds, which was shocking because they didn't, they didn't seem to fit the accounting profile that I think of when I meet an accountant, um, but hence that's why they're CEOs and COOs now. So uh, anyway, if you came from that, think about starting the recruiting business within that team. You already have a network. If you were a nurse, my good friend and mentor, Dave Klein, if you go on our site we uh, opened together, um, it was back maybe in 2008, called Neighbor, N-A-H-B-R.com. Neighbor.com stands for National Association of Home-Based Recruiters. We started that years ago. We're in, what, 2012 now, so we're four years ago, when we both knew we were, were so successful, doing great, having fun. We wanted to give back and help mentor. And we started, it was off to a slow start because we were so busy recruiting into our businesses that each time we started training people, uh, we had almost put it back burner. We're trying to hand off people to mentor to the other one because we just didn't have the time. So, um, but the reason I refer you to Dave is he used to be a nurse. Uh, he was in, um, that was probably many, many years ago. I think he was a nurse out of school, if I remember his background. Um, he owned his own business where he actually did um, almost like a Kelly temporary service, but for nurses, if I recall that, right? And uh, where I think he, he had over hundreds of nurses that he actually employed and then would um, send them off to hospitals. And then that, I don't know how that evolved into the recruiting thing. But anyway, he always stayed in that same area of expertise, which then expanded, just like mine expanded from sales and even medical sales to now clean tech and then going up the ladder to maybe CEOs of clean tech or VPs or even engineers, which are totally out of my scope um, as far as how I think. But, you know, we've hired them. So... Um, so figure, just look what's simplest, you know, where did you come from and what was the background and, uh, think about the network you already have there. Um, start getting on the LinkedIn there. We talked about some social media, but I'll focus more on that. And maybe the next clip here, cause I'm kind of going, I want to go again a bit long. Um, maybe I should just make these clips 10 minutes instead of five cause I'm over seven here. Um, so anyway, that's enough for right now, but that, that's what you want to be thinking on. So think in the marketplace, if that makes sense. And it seems like this is something that still feels like a fit for you. Um, go ahead and follow me on to session three. Thank you.